It's a big question. How much of this testimony will the jury ultimately hear? Yeah, our Nick Neville is live outside the Colleton County Courthouse. And Nick, we just heard testimony from SLED Firearms Examiner Paul Greer. Why is he such a critical witness for the prosecution? Yes, Billie Jean and Judy. So Greer's testimony is important to really establish a key part of the state's argument that it was a Murdoch family weapon that was used to kill Maggie. The defense did try to block Greer from testifying in a pretrial motion, but Judge Clifton Newman ruled that he could. After reviewing casings found at the murder scene, Greer concluded that the 300 blackout shells match ones found elsewhere on the property. The cartridge cases uh, recovered items two through seven near the, uh, the body um, did have matching mechanism marks with several of the items from the area around the home and those in the shooting field and several of those in the shooting field to conclude that some of those had been, or excuse me, that those had been loaded into, extracted and ejected from the same firearm at some previous time. The defense pushing back, saying that there's not sufficient evidence to distinguish these shells from other 300 blackout rifles. Of note, Paul's friend Will Loving testified earlier this week that they fired this particular rifle outside the gun room a few months before the murders. That weapon is still missing. Earlier today, more witnesses testifying to an empty jury box about Alex's alleged financial crimes. Prosecutors are hoping to admit this as motive evidence for the murders. The Palmetto State Bank CEO testified that Alec was under crippling debt after the murders, at one point owing $4.2 million. And after June the 7th, did his account run to negative $347,000? Yes, sir. And the bank kept paying? Yes, sir. Perhaps the most generous overdraft policy ever seen? <laughs> Quite possibly. Tony Satterfield, the late Murdoch housekeeper's son, also testified that Alex stole from a multi-million dollar insurance settlement owed to the family after his mother's death. Did you ever get one cent from Alec Murdoch when he was still on, before all of this happened? No. Ultimately, it's unclear when and how Judge Newman will rule on how much of this financial evidence will come before the jury. The jury did hear testimony today from sled agents who conducted DNA swabs on several people, including some survivors of the 2019 fatal boat crash involving Mallory Beach, and also on the former groundskeeper at Moselle, C.B. Rowe, whom Alec mentioned in his first interview with investigators after the murder. Now, Greg Adeline is standing by. He's been listening to this testimony along with me all day. Greg, we want to take it to you for more on some of this financial testimony that we've been listening to. Of course, a big question here, outstanding question, is how much of this is going to be admitted as evidence? Yeah, that really is the million-dollar question, Nick, because after all, in all of this, there is a laundry list of potential witnesses here, but some of the most compelling sound was what we heard at the end of your piece in regard to Tony Satterfield. He is the son of the late Murdoch housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield, and he had Alec Murdoch as a lawyer shortly after that incident. Alec Murdoch telling him at the time that he'd file an insurance claim on the Moselle home, that he had policies, one for $500,000, another for $5 million. He testified did Tony Satterfield that he expected to get $100,000 potentially as a payout after his mother died. Now, months passed, and what Murdoch didn't tell him, he testified, was that that insurance company paid out $4.3 million, and the Satterfields did not get a penny. Instead, that money going straight to Alec Murdoch. And so that scene played out a little bit earlier today. Again, no jury present, and you could hear that questioning of Tony Satterfield and talking about his interactions with Alec Murdoch. Did he tell you that they had already gotten a settlement for $505,000? No. Did he tell you that they had already gotten a settlement for $3.8 million? No. Had he ever told you that there was an umbrella policy for $5 million? No. Did he ever mention to you anything about Forge? No. Did he mention anything to you about structuring any settlement? No. Did he, you give him permission to steal your money? No. 
Now, it's important to note that eventually Alec Murdoch did confess to taking $4.3 million that was expected to go to the Satterfields. He confessed to that, and the attorney who represented Tony Satterfield in that case, Eric Bland, spoke with me a little bit earlier on today, said he was very proud of Tony Satterfield for getting up in that jury box, and, or in the witness stand, I should say, and explaining just the extent of the fraud that was committed in that case. Now, whether or not he will testify, because he does have a compelling story to share, again, is not yet known. And because there are so many of these witnesses, we've had these evidentiary hearings pop up from time to time throughout this week. We don't know necessarily if they will appear in this trial. And so we expect to find that out possibly as early as next week, maybe early in the week. It's just a matter of time before Judge Newman decides who's in and who's out in continuing to bring the case against Alec Murdoch and what may have caused eventually him to commit the crimes that he's accused of. We are live in Walterboro. Greg Adeline, WIS News 10. All right, Greg, thank you very much. Very insightful as always.